Hello everyone, welcome back to Demet channel for trending political stories and economic related issues and anything else that's just trending in Zambia. Make sure you follow me for all those updates and uh, if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and you can also check out my channel profile and uh, choose uh, videos from the playlist that best suit your interests. With that said, let's jump right into it. Independence, we hope that his bail application can be heard. We have the cases of our two MPs, Honorable Nixon Chilangwa yeah. and Honorable Stotela, yeah. uh, with council chairperson and three other people that are locked up in Mukobeko uh, maximum prison. Again, they've, you know, they've appealed against those decisions, the sentences and conviction, and they've applied for bail. The bail in the High Court was uncharacteristically denied, and uh, I think our lawyers are grappling with that matter. There's never a time where a bail application pending appeal can be denied. But in this case of the two MPs, it was denied. They are not flight risk. They are current sitting members of parliament. And why use the both judicial and uh, uh, correction facilities to, to punish and imprison them? Of course, the target we know is political, to target their seats, to have their seats declared vacant so that there could be by-elections in those areas where the UPND are interested in. Mm -hmm. So that's a state from the side of the party. It's not a wonderful sight, and we have uh, various people locked up, you know, especially on Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act, issues of speech where they, they are declaring everything as hate speech, they are declaring everything as sedition, they are declaring everything as inciting. And uh, uh, we, we have many people that are y young cyber our bloggers that are affected by that. We have a case where the ordinary woman, Mayuma Elizabeth uh, Chakubami from Chingola, was picked from Chingola, as if there are no courts in Chingola, as if there is no police in Chingola. She, com she allegedly committed the offense in Chingola. She issued a voice note in her own house in Chingola. Why transport her under the cover of the night? And no female police, just these men in two vehicles carrying a woman the whole night from Chingola to Lusaka. It's that those issues that uh, we are grappling with and this is not just the case of the patriotic front you are aware socialist party president fred member is in court again facing various charges of sedition or hate speech or whatever they are manufacturing at every turn and uh, other member sean temple is facing various charges again of of speech nothing else but related to speech but that's state over uh, the the country when we say there's a shrunken democratic space this is what we mean. When we say there is a dictatorship reigning, this is what we mean. When we say there is an autocratic government and a dictator running the country, this is what we mean. And it's, it's uh, it, it, for us, the media, I must say, that uh, much as we are so independent and we are, uh, we, we are, we are obviously saving, uh, uh, we have saved different governments, political parties in government, political parties in governments, in and out, we have basically not seen a difference in what you are complaining about we have seen it under the MMD, we have seen it under the Patriotic Front, and we are seeing, for us, this is, 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 is normal routine in as far as um, the application of the law or misapplication of the law, uh, it's still the same. And, and I meant to believe that we will see the same. I mean, we'll see the UPND and the Auto Power complain as well what would be happening. And I think we, they complained, and they complained the most at the time they were in opposition. And I think we also saw this when the Patriotic Front was in opposition. They complained a lot, and we saw arrests of uh, uh, Mr. Michael Sutter. A number of, 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 of issues used to arise. It looks like it's a it's normal life now. I mean, we, we have to understand that there will always be complaints when law is applied. Unfortunately, the politicians are not listening from Zambians. Zambians don't want political violence. Zambians don't want the opposition harassed. Zambians want the opposition to freely campaign, freely air their alternative policies and budgets. They want a, a, a thriving opposition to challenge the sitting government. Zambians want an independent parliament. Zambians want an independent judiciary. Zambians want an executive that is working. The reasons the MMD was voted out was issues of corruption, application of the rule of law, or misapplication of the rule of yeah. law, abuse of uh, public order act, one of the reasons the PF lost power is exactly again those yes. same same issues, yes. issues of political violence, cadarism, allegations of corruption, arrogance. The PF we voted out of power. It's so it's so incredible to see the UPND on table charge repeat the mistakes of both the MMD and the PF. It's like their their memory is so short sighted. They've forgotten what Zambians wanted from them. Zambians wanted peace, want, wanted security, wanted national development. They wanted a thriving democracy. They wanted a, a free press. 
they wanted a, a thriving social media space. The UPND think that they have to do worse than what UNIP did. Lock people up, threaten people up, uh, detain people up, and uh, uh, abandon the economy while people suffer. So it's, it's so regrettable that they can't learn from history. If there should be any better president this country should ever have, it should be President Hagainde Ichilema. Because he's expected to learn from the mistakes and challenges of Dr. Kaunda, from the mistakes and challenges of Frederick Chiloma, from the mistakes and challenges of Levi Mwanawasa, from the difficulties of Rupia Banda, from the challenges of Michael Sata, from the mistakes of Edgar Lungu. Now this man on table charger, on steroid, is repeating double the mistakes. How can you have a president fire seven judges in a period of three years? Something that has never happened in the last 60 years. How can you have a president so careless, ignore the law? How can but, you have but, a president, but, but, but how can you have a president he abandoned? Would be, he would be a bad president if he doesn't act on recommendations of the JCC, for example. Oh, so let's talk about He would be a stubborn president if he doesn't act on recommendations. No, so uh, the dictatorship is arising that he manufactures those complaints. Moses Kalonde, who filed that complaint, is a surrogate of state house. He's been used in various cases against Edgar Lungu and others, including Joseph Malangi and Rafael Nakachinda. He's a surrogate of state house. So the complaint is manufactured by state house. And I'm looking forward to one of our lawyers, constitutional lawyers, to pursue this matter. Because when the Judicial Complaints Commission was established by the, uh, uh, the 2016 Constitution, it doesn't have an enabling law to actualize it. What they are using is an old law, the 1969 law called Judicial Complaints Authority. The JCC is supposed to have its own enabling law. Remember, under that law, which they are using, you are required to have a tribunal of less than three judges to hear a complaint. No tribunal has been set up, but that's what the Judicial Complaints Authority calls for. The JCC has no powers, that Vincent Malambo and his people, they have no powers to hear a complaint from, from the judges. Their role is, they don't have adjudicating powers. They can't be judges, they are, they are mere commissioners. So someone must test this process in court because you have a JCC created by the 2016 um, a constitution utilizing an enabling legislation uh, um, uh, called the Judicial Complaints Authority of 1969, I think, which called for, before recommendations are made, you needed to go to a full trial before a bench of judges. Vincent Malambo is not a judge. Ever Jala, is, they're not judges. Where are they drawing their adjudicating powers? That's why you can find within a period of one week, they would receive complaint, determine the complaint, and have judges fired. So it's just the dictatorial process by the president who is ignoring the law, uh, who is uh, abandoning the law, and who's taking advantages of weaknesses, like the lacuna I've just told you in relation to the JCC, which doesn't have an enabling law. Similarly, the, the public protector is paralyzed because the public protector is a new law. The enabling law is that it was an administrator general. And how do you balance the two? How do you balance the, that, that transformation? You need an enabling so law. So how is, how is the setup different from under the PF? of the JCC, for example. It was the same, no? So oh, we are it saying... Have judges as well. Uh, uh, it didn't have, but all it could do was to recommend. When a complaint comes, it would process a complaint. And then it, it's supposed to refer the matter to, to, to a tribunal by high court judges to determine and hear the matter. Then such recommendations are then taken to the president for action. In this case, this is Malambo and River Jala City. Uh, as, you know, and you uh, are saying that is how it's supposed to be done. But that, no, what is supposed to be done... That did not just, take place yeah, during what, your regime. No? What, what is supposed to be done? After we established a new creature in the Constitution yeah. called the Judicial Complaints Commission, we are supposed now to do an enabling law, go to Parliament, so that then we can spell out its powers, we can spell out its processes and procedures of how to attend to these complaints from the judiciary. That hasn't happened. Instead, we are relying... Because this, this complaint process used to be there under the Judicial Complaints Authority. That was before that an authority under, you know, under this a subsidiary legislation. But now we want a competent, clear, transparent judiciary. Hence, a 2016 created the Judicial Complaints Commission, among other commissions, to promote professionalism, independence. Remember, we, we, we had to put other other commissions in, uh, in the Constitution, such as Teacher Service Commission, we had to put Civil Service Commissions. This is to foster um, independence to promote uh, uh, professionalism. That's why even the even the, the JCC was created again with that view in mind. But we are supposed to create enabling legislation, the teacher service 
Commission Act, uh, you know, just like that. Yeah. We had to change the prison from what it was to a correction facility. Again, you are supposed to provide for it. I give an example of uh, the... Was this an oversight or you basically ignored and you never thought uh, this thing would have uh, future effects? No, 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 no. Uh, Legislation because, is... Uh, because then seven years since it was uh, the, the, the 2016 uh, constitution was put in place seven years down the line you did nothing about such uh, ambiguities no no no. in the constitution usually you provide for what are called transitional clauses as so, uh, so that the gaps are not there but within a short period you should provide for proper legislation mm. uh, you have um uh for example w where you can have dual citizenship okay we provided for it in the constitution again we're supposed to legislate and enabling legislation how to act that out if you have seen the challenges and difficulties in effecting the dual citizenship clause which is provided for now as a matter of right in the constitution but you're supposed to enable it with enabling legislation i've just given you an example of uh, the public protector that institution is supposed to be the most powerful law enforcement institution it is the only one that has uh, from where we are getting it as an ombudsman either from south africa uk or where it's the only one that can walk into state house and that's the president questions you are alleged to be corrupt on the mines you are alleged to be corrupt on fertilizer you are alleged to be corrupt on procurement of oil you are alleged to be corrupt what is your answer mr president no law enforcement agency has powers to question the president in fact not even his ministers they need to get permission from the president but the public protector is the only one and you understand why they are failing to provide for the enabling legislation because supposed to be the most powerful to to keep the executive accountable but they would rather that is paralyzed not provided for and they will not bring to sight any law enabling the public protector and but they will abuse the jcc which is using an old law to then intimidate the judiciary and whip them into line that you can be fired even for your own judgment that you can be fired for tendering your legal opinion on a matter that you can be fired for doing your job president Ichlema has managed to put the judiciary into line. They are now like the attorney general. They are now advising presidents. They are now acting what president wants. It's no longer a judiciary that should be independent, that should be fair, objective, and that can deliver justice in this country. So at the altar of justice for this country, what has died is a judiciary. Let's get to uh, the economy uh, side of things. And, uh, and I think let's start from the fact that uh, the 2025 national budget has been presented. Uh, and I'm sure you took keen interest in, in just uh, uh, looking at uh, what would be of interest, where uh, it's inadequate and where it's adequate. What is your making of the budget? Uh, first of all, this is supposed to be their most practical budget, the last budget before we go to elections. And this government has failed and failed lamentably in the last three years. The 2025 budget is supposed to bridge the gaps ensure that the economy recovers, ensures that, uh, uh, that they are going to an election in full employment, you know, uh, with an economy doing well and with various uh, services, public services provided for. But uh, it, it is a disaster. Nothing will come out of that budget. First of all, the deficit has grown. The borrowings have grown. This government continues to rely on borrowings. And it says that it will draw 80% uh, of um, its budget from domestic resources. Which domestic resources will they get from? From an, a, a, an economy that is collapsing? Look, 2022, 2023, they pro projected that the economy will, will grow around 4.7. They revised it to about 2.2%. They did the same in the 2023, 2024. They projected that the economy will grow by 4.5%. By the end of the year, Msokotwani had revised the growth to 2%. And now he had projected, despite the, the lag in the last two years, that the economy will grow by 4.7%. 4, 4 it does not. The IMF just issued a statement last week. Is it early this week? Where they stated they've revised the economy that the impact of drought and the lack of power to the country, it will not grow beyond 1.2%. So where will Musa Kotwane get 80% of revenue from our people? This is a government that has abandoned collecting taxes from the mining sector. They abandoned the mineral royalty tax, which was non-deductible. They made it deductible, literally optional. The income from the mines has dropped from $1.1 billion in 2019, in 2020 and 2021, to barely $300 million. So there is gloom ahead of us. They are relying on grants and budget support from Europe, from America, from UK, with a begging ball, for, you know, using the drought as an excuse. And I have to be very clear, they are using the drought as an excuse. How is it an excuse? It's an excuse because, because the drought is not of anyone's making. Yes, you plan for it. 
if the Egyptians could plan for drought, so many for for for, for you know for for what can I say? Four thousand years ago, the Egyptians could plan for drought of seven years. We can't plan for drought of one year. The Patriotic Front did plan for this drought because when we suffered the worst drought in thirty years in twenty fifteen. They said you are going to have another drought in the next 10 years, 2023, 2024. By 2020, you saw the PF begin to stockpile maize. And by the time, from 2019, by the time we were going to an elections, we had a, a, a national strategic maize reserves of three years stockpile, 1.5 million metric tons. Because we knew one of the worst drought was knocking on our door. We were warned in 2015 that your, your worst drought is coming in the next 10 years. What did our brothers do? As soon as they came in office, they couldn't believe the amount of maize they found. And they began to export and export and export. They depleted the 2021 strategic maize reserves. Even the bumper harvest that we had provided for, because by the time we're going to elections in August 2021, fertilizer had been distributed on all districts, provinces, chief domes, up to the level of constituencies. And when we went to that election, you saw the bumper harvest that, was, that came in 2022. Our brothers thought this is bumper harvest from heaven. They didn't know that it was planned for. And they proceeded to export everything. Now they are embarrassing themselves, putting out begging balls in Europe, in America. They've just gotten a subvention of $500 million from a loan, by the way, from the IMF. They're using it as an excuse. When our dear brother, the managing director at Zesco, was signing these agreements with Nampower of Namibia, with Botswana and Power Corporation, with South Africa. We warned him, stop these exports. Conserve water. The Zambezi River Authority has warned you that we have one of the worst drought in the, in the last hundred years. And instead of the normal allocation of water that we give you, we're going to give you barely three quarters, I think a half of what they usually allocate. But no, our brothers at Zesco are running the machines at full throttle. Despite the technical warning, the expert warning, despite professionals warning them. Imagine if Zesco had instituted three-hour load shedding from when we got the warning in, in um, 2023. We could afford three hours load shedding and we could have then used less water. But no, Zesco said, no, no, they needed to pay the bill of uh, 1.5, 1.7 billion dollars that Zesco was, was owing. Yeah. And therefore they needed to ramp up the export so they could liquidate. Now Zesco is scrambling with huge power import bills they will likely go to a bigger debt than the one they found. Because now they have to import power at commercial rate from Mozambique, from, from South Africa. Power we cannot afford. Remember, we ran out of water far earlier in the Kariba, our location, June 2024. Zimbabwe and Harare had no blackouts. Why? They had planned. They used their water properly. Their machines were running. Family. Ours here. They thought by getting this quick money and dismantling and paying mamba collieries, uh, the bill they owed, that it was prudent. Now they've, they've sunk the economy. Zesco is such a scandal that it has sunk the economy. Our economy was supposed to grow at 4.7. It's growing at 1.2%, thanks to Zesco. Our economy is collapsed, and we have to look for fresh money to attend to the draft, thanks to Mutolo, Minister of Agriculture, who decided to export the maize despite the regular warnings. Our MPs did a fantastic job to remind Mutolo that, Honorable Minister, you cannot be exporting maize when you know that we are in the middle of, we're going to be in the middle of drought. And as late as November, December, when we are now suffering from that uh, dry spell, one of the worst dry spells, he was still exporting maize and justifying on the floor of the house that government will continue to uh, 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 export both maize and millimil. That is a government you have. And now they come to us, they said we should sympathize with them. The president says his drought is not his making, and that uh, the, the opposition, we are being careless by not supporting his cause to, to deal with emergency. Yet he caused this crisis. He has not reigned in Zesco. No one at Zesco has been punished. Our economy has dropped down from 4.7% to 1.2%, and it might go into negative. No one has been punished at Zesco. I bet even their MD and the board chairs will even have their contracts renewed they will reward criminality. Even the imports that we are now, the country has to, 
suffer these imports they have to finally pay it will be a huge bill that zesco so, has so to what do you expect zesco to do in this case if if the date that it, uh, it accumulated which what uh, arguably and not even arguably uh, is again inherited from the patriotic front era uh, we we do understand that you left quite a lot in as far as uh, debt uh, around Zesco is concerned. So here is a government and, and you are told you have to liquidate your own debt. You have to find means and ways of liquidating your own debt. We are highly indebted as a government. So uh, see what you can do. And that's the only option they have. Export, but there was expert warning that you not have adequate water. You are going to have one of the worst droughts in 100 years. Our role was to conserve that water. And remember we have power stations on the same river on, on both Kafue and Zambez. We have various power stations from the one in Livingstone uh, 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 by the way, the one in Livingstone, which uses uh, 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 Vic Victoria Force w uh, water, again, a prudent decision must be made. Do we need to continue generating, keeping that station open? Or we allow, we close that channel of water and allow the water to flow so that your Victoria Force can have water. You can make that prudent decision because the income from tourism is also very, very good. But of course, they won't tell you that story. They will not tell you that Victoria Falls. A, a power station gets water from Zambezi just above the Victoria Falls. That's why the Zimbabwean side has, still has a water falls. Ours do not have because our water is going to generate power in the Victoria Falls power station which is below the gorge. We have various uh, 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 power stations on Zambezi River. We ought to be prudent with our water and we were warned by the managers of this water, Zambezi River Authority. But we've been very careless with that. Like I gave an example of Kariba. We could have started for one year a load shedding of three hours and then there's an issue of export this government won't stop the exports you saw zimbabwe i mean you saw Botswana, saying their industry is kept alive mainly by imports from zambia so someone has sacrificed the zambian economy to keep the Botswana economy alive what carelessness is that what criminal negligence is that and who's paying for that if you are the, a proper leader at state house this is what he will do he will deal with the issues at Zesco. He would fire the managing director for those careless decisions. He would dissolve the Zesco board. He would call for experts to advise him what we do now. And remember, I've, I've just published on my page a fresh warning because by August, we're told that after El Nino, there was a weather phenomenon called La Nina. Yeah. And we're going to have adequate rain and we're going to have probably then adequate power yeah. and we're going to have good harvest. But now, both an organization called Femin Early Warning System it's run by USAID. It talks about feminine occurrence and it watches the weather very prudently. And an Australian firm, it revised their positive uh, 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 focus on Southern Africa. And they're saying we might go into a second drought. It may not be severe as the El Nino one, because it'll be La Nina, yeah. but we may still be in a drought mechanism. If there's any time you want experts on food security, if there's any time you need proper uh, advice, technical advice on power and, and, and your power generation, it is now. But as usual, like they did last year, our friends will not bother about these reports, they'll continue. Here, our country is collapsing, our businesses are collapsing. Uh, Zach, I don't know how you are even surviving, because you have to run this station on gensets. Adverts are few because the economy is doing very badly. How you are running this station live, and this is the same to all businesses, small and medium enterprises across the country are collapsing. But someone at Zesco has decided that the exports to Botswana must go on uninterrupted. And Botswana even has uh, the audacity to be on their rooftop and saying our economy is doing very well. Our economy despite the El Nino drought crisis in Southern Africa, despite these challenges, we have power from Zambia and South Africa. South Africa is nuclear, South Africa is coal. Okay, coal doesn't really need a lot of water to generate power. We have hydro based on water, purely on water up to 90%. But we are still exporting to Botswana. We are still exporting to Namibia. We would rather keep those economies alive than our own economy. What criminal decision is that? Then the president says we need to support him on these measures. How can we support a criminal enterprise? How can we just tell us? And then on imports, for example, uh, ZNS supplies millimil at 130 kwacha because the market price is, you know how high it is. It's between 350 and 400, 450, depending on when, where you are. So a subsidy from ZNS must help. But ZNS will not tell you where they're getting their maize. They will not tell you. There were allegations that they were importing finished product from South Africa. And documents began to fly around. They had to charge Thomas Ziambo for breaking that story. 
instead of attending to the complaints and the documents that emerged that ZNS under cabinet office was going to import for the next 10 months, millimil, attend to that issue. Don't, don't rush to punish journalists that are just demanding for the truth to be told. During the Afro-toxin crisis, they arrested our Secretary General, Rafael Nakachinda, for merely calling out the poison that was on the market, for merely causing, calling for, uh, for accountability, for demanding from the authorities to establish where the maize came from, how it found itself in the value chain, and how our people were consuming these toxic substances. He was arrested. That is to shut debate about such important matters. So we, we, we have difficulties. But, but, but why would you want to, I mean, why would you call it to shut debate? And also, um, what's the debate for if there is action that the government of the day is taking on any matter uh, uh, that, that you raise? For example, on